I'll be reading you an interesting story titled A Stitch in Time by Akojoto Lugat Okololo. The cold night breeze penetrated into the pores of his skin, making him feel cold. The night was dead silent. Only the sound of insects could be heard. Richard shivered with cold as he held his polythene bag containing his clothes. As he trudged along the road, walking to no place in particular, tears cascaded from his eyes profusely. He wept like an infant, pleading to be breastfed. The thought of how his uncle had just driven him out of his house came heavily upon him. He wondered why his uncle would treat him so badly without even his uncle's wife coming to his rescue. What has he done to warrant all this? He asked himself. He could still remember how it all happened. He had lost his parents to the cold hands of death his parents had been involved in an automobile crash and had died instantly. And when the family had deliberated on who to take care of him, it fell on his uncle, Uncle Chica. But his uncle and his wife had been so inhuman to him as though they were not blood relatives. And now, for no just reason, his uncle has thrown him out of his house. Sounds of footsteps truncated his trails of thought. Richard shuddered with fright. He raised his head and saw a figure advancing towards him. He was alarmed. Instant sweat broke out on his forehead and his legs ferried him to a corner. From his hideout, he craned his neck and watched like a rat in his hole. He didn't see anybody, but he thought he had seen someone approaching. Had the person suddenly vanished? He asked himself. Or could it be he was hallucinating? No, the latter thought can't be the case. Yet, he had seen somebody coming towards him. His eyes couldn't have been playing pranks on him. A rat scurried past his feet. He cowered. His heart skipped a bit. His eyes became as sharp as the sun and were vigilant to catch any upcoming move. When he waited for what seemed like ages and didn't see anyone, he came out of his hideout. His chest was still heaving like drums of war. As he had begun to walk along the road, the fear of the unknown enveloped him. Soon, a flash of lightning came upon the sky and for once illuminated the night. No sooner had the lightning occurred than a loud thunder clap arrested it, the tranquility of the night. Again, a wild wind began to blow. Richard knew what all these signs were foretelling. It was about to rain. But silently he prayed that the rain should not drop. Where could he seek refuge? Where there was no place or roof where he could hide from the rain. For the obtain time, he wished that the rain would not fall. To his dismay, the rain suddenly started falling. And it came so heavily that he had to run just to seek a place to hide. Richard felt his prayers wasn't answered. A sad grimace was manifest on his face. Why has the rain refused to cooperate with him? He was further dejected as he thought that even the elements of the earth rejected him. Luckily for him, he sighted an all-completed building up ahead of him. He heaved a sigh as he felt a burden had just been lifted from his shoulders. Quickly, he raced to the building like a mad cat in a wild chase for his prey. He scuffed his legs into the building. At first, he was frightened. There might be danger in that building. But where else could he go? Was it not better to seek shelter inside the building than to be drenched by the rain? He gave view to the recent thoughts and proceeded into the building. The building was a two-bedroom apartment. At first, he wanted to have a rest in the parlor. He waved off the thought and almost immediately, he went into one of the rooms. In one of the rooms, he found a broken cupboard, 
A sheet of old carpet was lying beside it. Richard felt relieved. At last, the room seemed safe. Paraventure, anybody enters into the building, he could easily sight the person from where he was. He dropped the bulletin bag close to him as he laid on the old carpet to have rest. The sound of the rain beating against the aluminum roofing sheet was the only audible sound in the building. He began to think of the event that had ushered him into his present predicament. The thought of how he had lost his parents to the cold hand of death began to reappear in his delicate mind. Tears had begun to well up in his eyes, but unfortunately, just as he was about to close his eyes to sleep, he heard a sound. Richard was jolted from sleep by the footsteps in the building. He was alarmed. By now, the rain had stopped. He rose to his feet. His legs were prepared to take him on a flight to safety, perhaps on impulse. He spotted a round, tiny hole on one of the walls that demarcated the parlor from the room. He peeped through the hole. About six men with masked faces were inside the parlor. The men were all clad in black. Fear enveloped him. His eyes veered from man to man. Soon, the men began to remove their masks. But since it was too dark, Richard couldn't see any of the faces. Run, Richard, run. That was what he could hear in his head. But as if being controlled by an unknown force, he decided to watch, oblivious of any danger. The men were now speaking in muffled. Suddenly, one of the men beamed his torch and pointed to the floor. The other two men quickly stooped down as if they were bowing to him. Richard watched on. Momentarily, the sound of the metal enveloped the building as the men who had stooped down began to pull a large rectangular metal from the floor. When they had finally succeeded in pulling away the metal, a round deep hole was revealed. Fast, be fast, the man holding the torch commanded in a rapt voice. It was conspicuous that he was the leader of the gang. Quickly, the men hauled the three bags into the hole and again, pulled the rectangular metal cover over it. Good, good, well done, the leader commended. He switched off the torch again, like a master giving out instructions to his servants. He muttered, let's meet at Palm Royal Bar by 10 a.m. tomorrow. With that, the men evacuated the building, leaving the leader behind who began to look around the building as if he was searching for something. Richard's chest began to beat fast. He seemed to be too dazed to run away. Soon the leader stopped in his track, exhumed a phone from his pocket and dialed a number. The phone was placed on loudspeaker as the caller tone wafted into Richard's ear. Hello, a rough masculine voice said from the other end, when the call was picked. Hello, sir. The deal has been done. It was successful. The leader announced gleefully and ended the call. No sooner had he ended the call than he began to walk away from the building. Richard watched him leave. Minutes later, when he was sure that the man won't resurface, he was lost in thought. He wondered what could be inside those bags. He knew instinctively that the men were criminals. Who could have been their victim, he thought. Although throughout the night he couldn't close his eyes to sleep, sleep simply eluded him. The next day came so swiftly, and as soon as Richard could take his sleep, he recalled the event he had witnessed last night. He wasn't sure of what to do. How could he report his findings to the police? He knew that the men were criminals and should be stopped. Such persons were dangerous to society. What if he goes to the nearby police station and told them what he had seen? It was the best thing to do. A stitch in time saves nine. He dragged his legs along the road leading to the nearby police station. He recalled that the men had mentioned meeting at a place by 10 a.m. the following morning. 
Yes, Royal Palm Bar was the meeting point. In a moment, he arrived at the police station. He met a policeman smartly dressed at the counter. Richard confronted him. Good morning, sir. Richard greeted. His bulletin bag clamped under his armpit. The policeman raised his face to look at him. He mumbled a dry response. What do you want, little boy? He probed. Richard told him his findings. A palpable expression which shows that he was shocked was manifested on his face. Just as he was speaking, another policeman walked in. The former policeman told the policeman who walked in all that Richard had said to him. Are you sure of what you're saying, boy? Asked the policeman who had just walked in. Richard nodded his head in affirmation. That could be the man who invaded Chief Maduka's house last night, said the policeman, clad in mufti. I felt as much, affirmed the pol other policeman at the counter. Now, Chief Maduka was a business tycoon. A band of robbers had invaded his house last night and absconded with his money. The chief had returned from the bank with the money he had intended to use to purchase his goods the following day. He concluded that the armed robbers had acted on a tip-off. Immediately after the intruders had left his house, he called the police station. That same night, the police swung into action, but hadn't been able to catch the criminals. Those were the same men Richard had come across in the uncompleted building the previous night. I can take you to the place where the armed robbers had hidden the money, Richard said. At once, the police swung into action. Policeman, who was clad in mufti, as Richard had earlier learned, was a sergeant. He took four other policemen with him to where Richard was to show them. When they reached the uncompleted building, Richard showed them the spot where they had buried the money. And the policemen retrieved the money immediately. To their shock, they found arms and ammunition inside the bags. Having been informed by Richard of the location where the arm robbers were to meet, the policemen drove immediately to the place. They arrived there within a twinkle of an eye. The armed robbers were surrounded by the policemen. One of them was trying to run away and was shot on the leg. The policemen handcuffed the armed robbers and took them away to the station. Chief Maduka was immediately contacted that the criminals have been apprehended and that he should come to the police station immediately. I'll be on my way right now, mobile Chief Maduka. From the manner at which he had spoken, it could be clearly understood that he was excited on hearing the news. Soon, Chief Maduka stormed the police station with smiles clearly written all over his face. Having been told by the police that it was Richard who helped them to apprehend the criminals, Chief Maduka was filled with gratitude. He thanked him endlessly, but Richard only hung his head and wept. Chief Maduka was puzzled. He prevailed on Richard to tell him why he was so sad. Richard recounted all his ordeals. The chief, including the policemen who listened almost wept. The chief had pity on him, took him home, and decided to adopt him after signing the necessary documents. Chief Maduka sponsored Richard's education even to university level. Richard graduated from the prestigious University of Lagos where he obtained a first class degree. Not long after, Richard was swimming in money. Mm. The moral of the story can also be found from the title of the story, A Stitch in Time. A Stitch in Time. The earlier you do that thing which you are supposed to do, the better for you. Richard was brave. He was very brave. And immediately he told the police about his findings. So bravery is key. Other morals from the story, you will be telling me your own moral that you derive from the story is teach in time. 
Richard was brave because it's not easy. A little boy having the courage to go to the police station and to report his findings. Some, some, some of you would have said, mm, no, I'm just a child. I will not go. They will not believe me. No, you have to stand up. Be brave like Richard did. And of course, you see the reward. He was adopted. He was trained. And he became a big, big man. So that is what it is. There is so much benefit in being brave.